with that being said, B, we've reached that time. It's you time know what time it is. It's, it's for time the for the true minute, minute drill. Drill. Hey, What's before up? we jump into that, guys, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Blue Bloods College Game Time. Subscribe to us there. Anywhere else you listen to your podcast, man, make you share, like, leave a comment, send to a friend. We appreciate you greatly. Hey, and if anybody wants to sponsor the True Blue Minute, yeah. holla at us, man. Holla at us. We are, we are open for business. We are. We're making moves with Sports Illustrated right now. Like, if you want to get in, now is the time. Now is the time, so, man. Come on in. Let's go. So what's the so True Blue Minute this week? We're going to talk about this USC coaching search. So you could say whether who you think they should hire and why. You could say what you think they should be looking for and why, but really anything pertaining to this USC coaching search, because in case you did not know, they fired their coach this week. Uh, they did. Coach Helton, Clay, Clay Helton. Helton, right? Yeah, I keep Seven wanting to say seasons. his brother's name. Um, but Clay Helton got fired. I posted on Twitter when it happened. You can follow me at It's Trey Smith. But, boy, when USC fires a coach, they're always good. they don't always fire a coach, but when they do, they make sure it's in season. It's in the middle of the season, they, baby. <laughs> they left Lane Kiffin at the tarmac. They left uh, – uh, pretty sure Sarkeesian got cut middle of the season, and then now yeah. Clay Helton getting cut in the season. So, anyways – they're open. Their job is open. There's a lot of candidates being tossed around. Um, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, let me go first, man. I, I'm, I, I, I need to get this off my chest. Okay, well, you know the drill. Start on the whistle, end on the, end buzzer. On the buzzer. Let's do it. Here we go. Ready? Ready? All right, USC, this is what you need to do. First, you need to follow me on Twitter at Real B Holmes because this is what I told you. If there is a name you need to go get, you need to go get my man Goat Franklin, a.k.a. James Franklin from Penn State. If you watch what he's done since the moment he stepped foot in Happy Valley, he has transformed that program. He gets them up for big games. He gets the talent he needs to win at Penn State. They have a moxie. They have a swagger. He has the gall to make the big calls in a big moment. Like if you'd watch the play back of the end zone, like third down and three, he throws the fade route to the outside where only his wide receiver or you're going to get a P.I penalty call mm. that's the kind of coach you need but then you also need a coach who can handle Hollywood and James Franklin has the swagger he has the personality he has the boldness to handle Hollywood to recruit at a high level and to coach big games if I'm USC right now I'm calling James Franklin finish the season and come get you a house in Malibu or Beverly Hills wherever you want to be and bring USC to the top all right money Okay. Hey, man, I've been sitting on that. I've been I've been ready to get that off my chest. I see. Well, um, mm -hmm. here I go. I'm, I'm I, I've got it. a lot of thoughts, but I, I, I'm here. We go. Ready? Okay, USC. Here's what you need to do. You need to go find a coach that is able to do two things. They are able to connect with the streets and they are able to connect with Hollywood. One of the things that Pete Carroll was legendary for was being able to play both sides of that coin. A lot of folks say that USC must go find a Cali guy, and this is why. They talk about the Cali swag. They talk about understanding the kids. The reason why is because it takes the type of personality who, on one hand, can spend their time in areas that may be a culture shock to them from how they grew up and connect with people in, 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 in the streets and, and in areas where maybe there's gang affiliations and things of that nature. If you read about Pete Carroll, he had strong relationships in some of the toughest areas of South Central L.A., but then on the flip side, he's getting Will Ferrell and Snoop Dogg to all of his practices playing the Hollywood game as well. I'm not from Cali. I've been to Cali. I remember sitting in church where on one side there was Rodney Jerkins, the platinum award-winning producer, uh, Dark Child, and then on the other side there was a well-known, notorious uh, gang member in the area all on the same row. I'm over time, but that's what I think they need to go get. Man, you know, and, and I know we're getting ready to get out of here, but I will say this. I read this. You're right. USC needs to not worry. I don't think this is my opinion. You don't got to get the Cali guy. You got to get the right fit. Yeah. It's all about fit. And their last couple guys have been Cali guys because um, I think Helton's like a Cali. He's a, in, he was a, a guy yeah. that was in the system or whatever. I think, man, I'm telling you, they want to win. You go, you, unless you can go get Urban Meyer. Unless you can get Urban. Yeah. 
Well, he's just so iconic enough to where he'll he'll transcend it, it all. Like in right. my, I'm not from there, but I've been there like multiple times doing outreaches with Dream Center LA, and right. so I've seen firsthand how like you can spend your morning with homeless people on Venice Beach, <laughs> yeah. or you can spend your right. mo your morning in Watts, California, on Grape Street right. at Jordan Downs Community Center outreaching to kids where. I remember one year it was like we've got to go now because there was someone had caught wind of a of a of two local gangs were getting ready like yeah. something was getting ready to go down right. and they had to get us out of there like right. and then that evening being on a, a TV show the it's not um whose line is any whose line is it anyway but it's it's the one that Wayne Brady hosted I can't remember it was yeah, like yeah, finishing yeah, it was like finishing a song so. We, yeah, we got to go on, finish the lyric. Yeah, we got to go on that show. And it actually wasn't Wayne Brady. It was the former lead singer of, I think, Sugar Ray or Sugar, whatever. Oh, the, Mark, uh, Mark, yes. whatever his name is. I know you're talking about. Yes. But, but what I'm saying is, is like, and for me, this born and raised Texas boy, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, it, it's, it's, the, it's, you know, it's like, it's the Lord, if man. you don't know how to handle that, you're not going to be able to be successful at USC because it is just a different environment. You've got to understand Hollywood and you've got to understand the streets like you've got to understand and be the type of person that could come in and know how to communicate and network in both mm -hmm. worlds. And if you Absolutely. pull someone, you know, Matt Campbell or Luke Fickle from the Midwest, I'm not going to say work. they can't do it, but it's going to be extremely difficult for someone that all they know is Midwest culture, Midwest slang right. and Midwest kids to go in that type of of environment where you're literally in one day spending time with people on opposite ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. and really having to be able to one like Pete Carroll he got so much because he wasn't scared like he wasn't scared to right. go into areas that I think a lot of head coaches might be scared to go into absolutely and he just absolutely. went in there and had conversations and that's how he got his in with a lot of the different high schools and a lot of different a lot of the different kids and then he also wasn't scared to go in these celebrity rooms and go <laughs> right. after guys like Will Ferrell and and, and and play the Hollywood game as well and so to me, that's the kind of personality that they need. And then as it pertains to an X's and O's, quit going and trying to find the next sexy offensive guru, okay? Get back right. to your roots of what Pete Carroll built. He built those teams on a strong defense. Then, yeah, then they got the Reggie Bushes. Then they got the Matt Liners. Then they, right. you know, early on he had the Carson Palmers. I'm not saying they didn't right, have right, right. high-octane offenses, but he came in and built those defenses in a way where – they could anchor those teams down. And then his offenses eventually got to a point where they were just scoring ridiculous amount of points a game. But like, don't go find the next air raid guy. Like go find no. you a coach that understands Los Angeles, understands the culture and, and, and then we'll rebuild that defense. And I'm going to tell you right now, my, my under the radar name is Jack Del Rio. You've been saying that we texted about that. I said, I, could I, see I think that. he could do it. He played at USC. He played in the NFL. He coached in the NFL. He had he some success it. as an NFL head coach. He had success as a coordinator. Like, I think that's a guy that could come in who understands the culture. That's a guy who can, who can understand both sides of the spectrum of yeah. Los Angeles, of, of Southern California, and I think he could have success.